So this is Nightingale Hall. I heard about this place when I joined the guild, but I never believed it existed. The assumption that the Nightingales were just a myth was seeded within the guild on purpose. It helped divert attention from our true nature. What's wrong, Brynjolf? I can almost hear your brow furrowing. I'm trying to understand why I'm here, but I'm no priest. I'm certainly not religious. Why pick me? This isn't about religion, Brynjolf. It's business. God's willing, we'll find a chest full of gold in one of these chambers. This is Nightingale Hall. We were the first of the women wow. to set foot Would inside. Would you look at that? The first century. No. If you'll both proceed to the armor to don your Nightingale armor, you can begin the oath. Time's wasting, and Mercer's still out there. Let's get this show on the road. Mercer's still out there. Let's get this show on the road. You are here ready for the oath. I think we should trust the lass and take the deal. You are here ready for the oath. We've got these get-ups on. Now what? Beyond this gate is the first step in becoming a Nightingale. Whoa there, lass. I appreciate the armor, but becoming a Nightingale? That was never discussed. To hold any hope of defeating Mercer, we must have Nocturnal at our backs. If she's to accept you as one of her own, an arrangement must be struck. What sort of arrangement? I need to know the terms. Terms are quite simple, Brynjolf. Nocturnal will allow you to become a nightingale and use your abilities for whatever you wish. And in return, both in life and in death, you must serve as a guardian of the Twilight Sepulchre. Aye, there's always a catch. But at this point, I suppose there isn't much to lose. If it means the end of Mercer Frey, you can count me in. Are you ready to transact the oath with Nocturnal? Good. After I open the gate, please stand on the western circle. I think we should trust the lass and take the deal. We'll speak when the oath is complete. Would it be foolish to stop for a while and light a fire? We'll speak when the oath is complete. We'll speak when the oath is complete. of shadow. Hear my voice. Ah, Carlyle. I was wondering when I'd hear from you again. Lose something, did we? My lady, I've come before you to throw myself upon your mercy and to accept responsibility for my failure. You're already mine, Carlyle. Your terms were struck long ago. 
What could you possibly offer me now? I have two others that wish to transact the oath. To serve you both in life and in death. You surprise me, Caroline. This offer is definitely weighted in my favor. My appetite for mercy's demise exceeds my craving for wealth and grace. Revenge. How interesting. Very well. The conditions are acceptable. You may proceed. Lady Nocturnal, we accept your terms. We dedicate ourselves to you as both your avengers and your sentinels. We will honor our agreement in this night and the next until your conditions have been met. Very well. I name your initiates Nightingale, and I restore your status to the same, Carlisle. And in the future, I'd suggest you refrain from disappointing me again. I suggest you talk to Kalaya. Now that you've transacted the oath, it's time to reveal the final piece of the puzzle to you. Mercer's true crime. Mercer was able to unlock the guild vault without two keys because of what he stole from the Twilight Sepulchre, the skeleton key. By doing this, he's compromised our ties to Nocturnal and, in essence, caused our luck to run dry. Well, yes, but the key isn't only restricted to physical barriers. All of us possess untapped abilities, the potential to wield great power securely sealed within our minds. Once you realize the key can access these traits, the potential becomes limitless. Good. Then you understand why this is about more than just Mercer's lust for power. If the key isn't returned to its lock in the Twilight Sepulchre, things will never be the same for the Guild. As time passed, our luck would diminish to the point of non-existence. And whether you know it or not, our uncanny luck defines our trade. Very true. In our line of work, it's quite rare we set out to return a stolen item to its rightful owner. Before we depart, Brynjolf has some business to discuss. I suggest you listen to him. Listen, lad. There's one last piece of business. Carlia and I had a long discussion before you arrived here. Thanks to your efforts, Mercer's treachery has been exposed. After we deal with him, all that remains is restoring the guild to its full strength. As a result, we both feel that you have the potential of replacing Mercer as leader of the Thieves' Guild. I've been at this game a long time, my friend. A long time. I've stolen trinkets from nobles and framed priests for murder. I'm good at what I do, maybe even one of the best, but it's all I know. I've never been one to lead, never desired it, never cared for it don't want it. Well, we have a bit of an errand to run before your coronation, so don't get sentimental on it now. Then it's decided. When this is all over and Delvin's contacts assure me that we've regained our footing in Skyrim, we'll handle the details. Until then, we have quite the task ahead. I've been poring over the plans you brought us. And I'm convinced the eyes of the Falma are in the Dwarven ruins at Urkenthand. Carlia and I will meet you there. Prepare yourself, lad. This will be a fight to remember. Until next we meet, lad.